Welcome, everyone, to the L7C Podcast NFL Edition. Today, we are going to be talking some NFL. We're going to be talking about the NFL Draft, the first round that just happened yesterday, 4-29-2021. And we are going to have our NFL expert, our producer, Justin Akendel, talking some football. It's been a minute since the Super Bowl. How you doing, sir? Yeah, it's been a couple months since the Super Bowl, but I am back. Got my pages of notes from taking notes from watching the first round, watching the second round as we speak. It's a good day to be an NFL fan. That is, that is, they did not. The NFL guys did not disappoint you. They knew you were coming back today, and they had to give you some juicy things to talk about. So let, let's hit the draft. Um, obviously, the first round was yesterday, but before we – even talk about the picks and all that. Going into the draft, this one really seemed like the draft started at pick number three. So these past couple months, we've heard the stuff. Is it going to be Trey Lance? Is it going to be, what is it, Mac Jones? Is it going to be Justin Fields? What did you think about what the 49ers did during the offseason to move up to number three? Yeah, when I saw the trade, when I saw that they traded three first-round picks to move up in the draft. I knew instantly that obviously they're going to get a quarterback. You don't give away that draft capital and not go up and draft the quarterback. And then, you know, like a week goes by and then like it starts percolating that the pick that they were thinking about picking was Mac Jones. And I was like, Nani, what? Like (laughs) Mac Jones, like clearly the fifth best quarterback in the class about everyone we're talking about. And I was with everyone in the storm, I was just like, if they draft Mac Jones with this pick, this is just the dumbest thing ever. Like, there's plenty of quarterbacks better than him that you could get who have a much better upside than Mac Jones. In my opinion, Mac Jones is pretty much like a Kirk Cousins type. He's going to, you know, dink and duck the ball, ball, throw it deep when you need to. But, like, he doesn't really have escapability. He's less mobile than a Kirk Cousins, too. Like, if you watch some Alabama's games, when he does have a, when he does have a little bit of pressure, from anyone he's he folds he can't run away from anyone so the way the nfl is going i think that trading up however many picks they did to get you know stand up pocket quarterback was a little stupid in my eyes i'm I'm kind of glad they didn't do that because i was fully ready to rip them today if they would have yeah because kyle kyle shanahan he was the offensive coordinator for the uh matt ryan super bowl team when they went to the super bowl and he won mvp so i mean i guess Stationary type person would have fit his thing. We've obviously seen what he's done with Jimmy G. Um, and just one more thing on Mac Jones, because I, I think he's better than this guy, but no one's talked about him, and this guy's probably going to go fourth, fifth round. Is Mac Jones that much better than Kyle Trask? No one's brought that up, and I think I'm the first one to bring that up. You definitely are. If he, I would say he's better than um, Kyle Trask. I think he's more accurate than Kyle Trask. You got to remember, Kyle Trask didn't start didn't start until he got the floor he didn't even start for his high school team so after felipe franks left the program florida that's when kyle trask got a shot and you know he was playing with a pretty stacked team as well i don't think kyle trask has been drafted yet it's where like no. a pick he pick probably won't go, the second round he probably won't go to the fourth i was just bringing that up because obviously you watch the sec championship game and you saw trask even though alabama had didn't have their Top tier Alabama team. He was carrying them up. Obviously, he had a top ten pick on his team, uh, Kyle Pitt. But Mac Jones had the, probably the the best wide receiving core, obviously in college football, and who had were two top ten picks. One was the Heisman Trophy winner. And when I watched that game, they were pretty comparable. And Kyle Trask and Mac were like one of those Heisman Trophy finalists. So I was just wondering if he's really that much better than Kyle. And if Kyle could be like a steal for someone down the road, because to me, I felt like Kyle was more mobile too. Yeah, I think Kyle's definitely more mobile, but Mac Jones is really accurate. Like oh, yeah. the, lo- the little bit of film I was watching, like he can make every throw. His deep ball is a little wobbly. And I think that's where the, the difference is. Uh, Mac Jones is just more accurate than Kyle Trask. But the reason we're talking about San Francisco, because you knew they were getting a quarterback. I personally didn't know what the hell they were going to do. 
You didn't I, think they were going to get a quarterback after trading all those damn picks? I, I did, but I was like, if you're going to do it, just make trade Jimmy G now. Because I felt like if you're trading up, you do have to start. That's how I felt it was. But the rumors came out yesterday that San Francisco was big braining and they traded all that to go up and they were going to go try and get Aaron Rodgers from Green Bay. That was the rumor. So I'm like, oh, now it all makes sense. That rumor gets shot down. And before we even go to the draft, we get breaking news um, from everybody that Aaron Rodgers is telling some people he doesn't want to be there anymore. And this was right before the draft. And we all didn't know what to take of it because first it was reported by someone from like Minnesota and then Schefter and Rappaport and all of them guys confirmed it. I was not expecting that on my NFL bingo board at all. Justin, what the hell is, what is this? Aaron Rodgers is a very petty man. Yes, he is. A year to the date where Green Bay drafted his heir apparent, Jordan Love, traded up to the 26th pick last year to get him. And, you know, that's kind of what started this whole thing, the, the whole deterioration of Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers management relationship. I mean, they, they lost those back-to-back NFC champion games in um, 19 and 20, and it's just, it was just wild. I think Aaron Rodgers wanted to tank the draft day, tank the draft day coverage with that shit, because that's exactly what he did. I was sitting, I was sitting on my computer working, I turned the NFL Lives on, and they talking about Aaron Rodgers wants out. Out, out. I'm like, ham? I mean... And I'm thinking in my head, why didn't you say this when, you know, Russell Wilson was, you know, bitching? Because, like, if he would have done this, like, two months ago, he might would, he might get what he wants. But, you know, at this point in the game, like, you know, everyone, the draft's happening right now. People are picking up their quarterbacks. Like, I don't know what type of leverage he's about to have in, like, trying to get out of Green Bay. I don't think it's going to happen at this point. Yeah, and if he does get out of Green Bay, I don't have the stat with me right now but i know green bay wants to get rid of them it has to be after june 1st because they'll save about like 11 million dollars something of correct. that yeah, correct so they're gonna have to wait till that and you talk about aaron Rodgers is petty yes he's very petty but at the end of the season he's like i don't know what my future holds it's a beautiful mystery and then now there's reports that he's strongly considering retirement which i don't think that's gonna happen um, obviously, during the offseason, he hosted Jeopardy, and he's a finalist for Jeopardy. Is it something that he goes and does Jeopardy for a year if he retires then tries to come back up? But yeah, man, this relationship with Green Bay has been, to me, it's been for the past couple of years. When it started with him, like saying Mike McCarthy's basically, he's like, Mike's got to go. They got rid of Mike. They brought in Adam LaFleur. Uh, they got rid of Matt LaFleur. Him. Yeah, well, Matt LaFleur, I'm sorry, I said Adam LaFleur. Apologies to Matt. Uh, they got rid of Jordy Nelson, who was his boy, and he was one of his top targets without telling him, you don't do that. Um, even if Jordy's starting to be on the decline, you at least tell your quarterback you're getting rid of his top weapon. Got rid of his quarterback coach, too. You got rid of his quarterback coach without telling him. Uh, the stats already been out there. Nine out of the past ten years in the first round, the Packers have selected the defensive person, the only offensive person was Aaron, I mean, um, Jordan Love. So, I don't know, man. Like, we all talk about this past NFC Championship game, and you brought this up today, that Tom Brady just walked into the NFC, beat him at Green Bay, which he's always wanted an NFC Championship at Green Bay, and then he loses it. Tom, And then Tom wins the Super Bowl. You felt like that was the final like he's fed up he's got to go because i remember you said that this morning before we recorded yeah i said in the group chat we were you know we were all talking about it and yeah i thought that was the moment you know tom brady goes to goes to tampa and gets everything he wants i mean mm-hmm. a b signing everyone left and right got mike evans chris godwin all the all, all that good stuff you know I looked at I looked at um Green Bay's um draft picks. You know, they haven't drafted a skill player in the first round since God knows when. I've tracked it back in 2010. The only time they draft offensive players are Lyman and Jordan Love last year. 
So I, I just think that has a lot to do with it. Don Brady came into his conference. It was supposed to be Aaron Rodgers' year. He was extra motivated because they did draft Jordan Love. And, yeah. you know, Tom Brady just waltzes in there and wins the Super Bowl. And then the offseason, Aaron Rodgers could have took a pay cut. Not a pay cut, but he could have, you know, push some money back. So they could have signed some players. Aaron Rodgers did not want to do that. So, I mean, he's partly to blame because of that. But, you know, Green Bay didn't really do anything in free agency. They didn't really, you know, get them any weapons. I mean, they re-signed Aaron Jones, which they should have done. You know, he took a hometown discount. But and then and then this shit happens. And then this shit happens yesterday. You know, Green Bay goes and drafts a corner. I mean, they need a corner, but like, you know, they could have done like a little bit, you know, saving grace with Aaron Rodgers, like, oh, let's get this, let's get this wide receiver from um Minnesota who was um still on the board that they were talking about all night all night to draft that. They could have picked up and they didn't. So, yeah, I think they Green Bay came out and said they're not going to trade them, but I don't see Aaron Rodgers playing um for the Packers next year at all. I mean, not this year, but the year after that, twenty twenty two. Walk is, I mean, even though uh, Tampa Bay wasn't going to let Chris and AB go, at least you could have made an offer. Money talks. They didn't do that. They really just sat there. And you already said who they resigned, which they should have. But yeah, the wide receivers, they have not recruited them or went out and drafted them. Their top ones have been ones they've had for a while. Obviously, Aaron's had like Jordy Nelson, Greg Jennings. Um, obviously, he had the best wide receiver last year in Devontae Adams. But then you look on the opposite side, and it's like, who else is he throwing to? He has Lazard. Um, but hey, you're right. They've disrespected him and not drafting. The people, but Aaron, to his thing too. He's he sometimes gives like mixed signals to the public, like he'll be disgruntled, but then he'll sign the extension, like you said, or they can restructure his contract to get other people. He's like, no, I'm going to keep my contract. And there are people talking about this might be a money thing that he wants an extension, but he's about what thirty seven. Yeah, he's about to turn thirty eight. He's not worried about. He's not worried about money. I think at this point in his career, he's trying to he's trying to get in there in Super Bowl. This situation is just it feels like deja vu because not too long ago, Brett Favre was doing the same goddamn thing. Mm-hmm. Not the same exact situation. Brett Favre, you know, retiring, unretiring, all that good shit. You know, low key same type of situation when Brett Favre finally left Green Bay in two thousand seven. They lost in the NFC Championship game. Brett Favre's fall. He threw a pick six against the Giants, but. Green Bay finally had enough and shipped his ass off to the Jets. So it's almost like deja vu. Aaron does go to retire. Even they come back, it's almost the same thing. But I don't know who they would. If they were going to trade him, like you said, this should have been done two months ago. Because then you thought you would have got a draft pick this year. And I know people are talking the sexy one is Denver. They feel like if you get someone in Denver right now, they can win. Uh, they got Drew Locke. Drew Locke ain't it. It's been shown. They got Teddy, Bridge- Teddy Bridgewater, who's a very good quarterback, but he's not going to get you a Super Bowl. He's like a stopgap uh, quarterback. So I don't know how Denver pulls that off, but I'm, I'm, I would be kind of mad if Denver only wins Super Bowls when they trade for Hall of Fame quarterbacks like they did Peyton. So we'll see, man. I mean, we're definitely going to have to keep an eye on this, I know like the Green Bay organization's been flying to his house and all of that, but he took he took the news. He was on everything on ESPN was about him. So totally stole the day from these young men getting drafted. Yes, shame on you, Aaron Rodgers. Shame, shame, shame. Man, like like it's the same dude who ain't even cool with his like own family members off that bachelor incident a couple years ago. Like this dude holds grudges. You say that, but like that's why he's great. You been he was pissed off because he slid down the draft so far, and you know he took it out on the league. So that's what that's what makes him good is pettiness. So I I hope they're I hope they're able to work something out. But man, you got you got to love the Bears right now for drafting Justin Fields right now. This is literally they couldn't have, they couldn't have traded up and drafted him at a perfect time. The Lions suck. Minnesota is Minnesota, even though I think they're going to turn around a little bit next year. And you got turmoil in Green Bay. Like, let's, let's talk about the Bears and Justin. <laughs> oh, you want to go straight to go straight to the number uh, number eleven pick? 
So Chicago uh, got the number 11 pick. They actually traded with the Giants. And they did. They went and got Justin Fields. Justin Fields was the fourth quarterback. Yeah, the fourth quarterback taken in that. Before we even talk about the Chicago pick, which I think is a great pick for them because they were, if I remember correctly, they were eight and eight and they had a win in their in playoff game, like at the end of the year. If I remember right. Yeah, they won their. No, they lost their game. Yeah, they only they got in because the Cardinals lost. Yeah, they they had a win in your and they so they already have a playoff type team. But that was with Trubisky. Obviously, Trubisky's gone. Uh, they brought in Andy Dalton to be QB one. Now tweets looking like freezing cold takes, and now you got Justin there. Nick Foles. I mean, he's going to be a concert professional. We already know what Nick Foles is about. Dog gets Justin. So I'm gonna ask you one since we're talking about him. Where did all of the hate come from? Because at the beginning of the year, it was Trevor 1A, number one, Justin, number two to the Jets. And then he plays this year and then he randomly becomes the fourth, some people thought fifth best quarterback. And people were saying that if he didn't play this year, he would still be, he'd be number two, which is wild to think about. So, first of all, where did all that come from? And how do you feel about him going to Chicago? I just think the lead up to the draft, like with no combine and all that good stuff, motherfuckers just get bored mm-hmm. and they just they just watch too much tape and overanalyze that tape and quite frankly, overthink things. I mean, Justin Fields, you know, he fought to even get Ohio State to play, he played phenomenal in most of the games. I mean, we you got to remember, even the games that he played bad, Ohio State didn't lose, never lost a Big Ten conference game. Man's never lost a Big Ten conference game. I, quite frankly, didn't understand it. Like, every time I watch Justin Fields and then, like, going back and, like, researching him for the draft, like, he makes all the good – he make he can make every single throw. He's the exact opposite of Mitchell Trubisky, as in Mitchell Tr- Tr- Trubisky's not going to rip it and throw that ball deep when he sees it. Justin Fields will throw it deep. He was actually – I think that's why he, he fell in the draft because um he he has a tendency to hold the ball hold the ball to hit that deep play so I think that's why he was falling you know the guys the guys ahead and you know the Zach Wilsons the Mac Jones you know they're they're getting the ball out quick they're not holding it looking for that deep shot so I think that's why just Fields fell and then the Bears picking them I love them trading up to go get them. Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy, their jobs were on the line, so they had they had to do something. Andy Dalton was not going to save their jobs, and you get Justin Fields in there. I mean, you still have Andy Dalton, so you don't even have to start him right away. They still have Allen Robinson again, Tariq Cohen back. They still got a top ten defense. I I love the pick. They found the Bears finally have a quarterback, a franchise quarterback that they have never had. Like. Even when they won that Super Bowl in 85, I mean, Jimmy Mann was their quarterback, but, you know, he wasn't he wasn't a star or nothing. They won that defense from defense, so. I mean, that Super Bowl from defense, so. I just love the pick. I love what Chicago did last night. Last time they were in the NFC Championship, this day, Cutler got hurt, and then he was on the bicycle, and they kept showing him on the bicycle. And it's kind of crazy, because technically, I think Jay Cutler is the best quarterback that organizations ever had, which is saying something um and with justin too i just also found that it was interesting that they said he couldn't do this and that but the two games that i watched him go against trevor lawrence he outplayed trevor lawrence so especially the last recent one when he had six touchdowns absolutely one off and and he broke his rib in that game too he was playing hurt too like the man should have been a top five pick but i think i think i think he's better off for falling in the draft because like I know the Jets drafted Zach Wilson, but you know it's the Jets. I don't know how they're gonna but yeah, I think, do with him. I think the thing that gets me more mad that he should have been a top ten pick is when they were talking about the stats too, about like a top ten and then outside of the top ten. Like there's like an eleven million dollar difference between him and Trey Lance. And I don't think Trey Lance is eleven million dollars better than Justin Fields. Yeah, but they these quarterbacks make their money on their second contracts anyway. That's not really that big of a deal. I don't think he's worried about the $11 million there. As long as he's drafting the first round, 
I mean, this is more of a team friendly thing, but when you're drafting the first round, the teams have the fifth year option that they're able to pick up. So as long as that there, they're well, good. Number one was uh, to no surprise to anyone. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, this dude has been deemed the generational talent. Um, basically, high school. Like he's in this once in a generation thing with like John Elway, Peyton Manning, Andrew Luck, and now it's him. You're, well, both of ours because he was a coach of Florida and Ohio State. Urban Meyer, head coach over there. I mean, this was a can't, this was an easy pick. How do you feel Trevor is going to impact Jacksonville? Like, is it going to be immediate or? You think they're going to still need a lot more pieces? I think they're going to have a pretty, a pretty decent offense next year. They drafted ETN with their second first round pick. They had James Robinson last year, who was a thousand yard back. They were receiving towards pretty good. But Vincent Chenault, who they got in the second round last year, DJ Chark, Keelan Cole. So I think the offense, I think the offense will actually look pretty good. It's just a defense. They're going to get boat race, but. I can see them doubling their win. I can see them doubling their wins. You know, these these like rookie coaches do really well when they like. That's only two wins if they are one in fifteen. That's only two wins. <laughs> I can see them quadrupling their wins. <laughs> Forgot these motherfuckers only won one game and then lost fifteen straight. Yeah, that's. <laughs> That is wild, but yeah, they just need they just need to solidify their defense. I I think that they're going, and you gotta think about their division too. The fucking Texans are complete pure garbage. We don't know Texans what the hell their quarterback's even gonna be there. So yeah, we don't know what we don't know what the hell's gonna happen with Deshaun Watson. That's why we're that's the viewers were wondering. That's why we're not talking about. It. We don't know what the hell's gonna happen with him. We don't know if he's gonna be in Texas or if he's gonna be in jail. For real. <laughs> I think I think Tennessee is going to take I think Tennessee is going to take a step back since they lost their lost their offensive coordinator lost their number two receiver and lost their number two receiver and then Derrick Henry just has to slow down eventually. I mean, I I think the Titans need to get a good number two running back in the draft today later in a deeper round because Derrick Henry needs a spell. Yeah, Trey Sermon. Yeah, someone. They, they need another running back in there, in my opinion, to keep Derrick Henry's legs for us. So, yeah, I think there's going to be an opportunity to, for, for the Jacksonville Jaguars to do a lot better than they were last year. You, you know, in the NFL, there's always a team that goes worse than first. I'm not saying they're going to be in first place, but, yeah, I'm, I definitely think they're going to improve from last year. There's only one place to go when you only, only win one game, for real. So. Uh, in the AFC South, because she actually – had the same thing that you brought up. Obviously, shout out to our, our queen, Chelsea Police, now a doctor. She brought up if Aaron Rodgers would have brought this thing up two months ago, the Colts would have pivoted off getting Carson Wentz and went after Aaron. That's what that that's that was the point I made earlier. Like you could have um if Aaron Rodgers would have opened his mouth and say he wanted out two months ago when teams didn't already fill their quarterback needs, there would have been more options for him. Right now, it's pretty much just Denver and maybe the Washington football team, but I don't think they're going to trade them in the NFC. So, because you want to talk about win now, if Aaron Rodgers, if you would have dropped Aaron Rodgers to the Colts, with that, I mean, like, I feel like a lot now they're just sitting back. Like, I think all the GMs are thinking like you, like, bro, why didn't the season's been over for months? Why didn't you say something? Why ain't y'all? Why ain't you say something? Like. You over here slap dicking around, diddly fucking around, doing Jeopardy and shit. When you should have been thinking, of, you should have been thinking about how the how can I get out of Green Bay? I'm sick of these motherfuckers. <laughs> like, Zach Wilson. I mean, off season was the greatest thing ever for him. He shot up. I have watched some. Um, I've watched some of the tape and all of that. The dude can throw. He can make every throw. Uh, he is athletic. People need to calm down. I saw people trying to say he's already he's a Patrick Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers type. I want to wait a couple of years before you start making those comparisons. But he's going to the Jets, who got rid of Sam Darnold for him, and Sam Darnold's at Carolina. How do you think Zach Wilson's going to do? Next year, I don't think the Jets are going to be really much better than they were 
the year before because they got they got Buffalo in that division. They went to the AFC Championship game. Miami was knocking at the door to be a playoff team. I don't think they're going anywhere. And then the Patriots were seven were seven to nine last year, and they got the quarterback that they had their eyes on with um. They got the quarterback on their minds with Mac Jones. So, yeah. Yeah, I don't see I don't see the Jets really doing anything. They're tr- they're trying with Zach Wilson. They're giving him a little bit of weapons. They signed Corey Davis over the offseason. They traded up to get a guard to solidify that left side after drafting Mekhi Beckton at left tackle last year. But I'm just in the way of seeing pros with Zach Wilson. I mean, watching watching the film, he can sling it. Like he can make every single throw, but played at BYU. BYU played one of their worst schedules ever. I mean, they're playing like Youngstown State and shit. I mean, he wasn't playing anyone. And his 2019 season was really bad, but he was coming on sur- um, soldier surgery, so I kind of get why he will look bad in 2019, so we just gotta wait and see with him. Yeah, the number three that we've already talked about due to like and stuff, but they went Trey Lance. And Trey Lance, I mean, this is one of the craziest stories I think of my adult life in the NFL draft because nobody knew who the hell this guy really was. He's only thrown 318 pass attempts in college. So, but I looked at him, obviously he's tall. He, I mean, I've watched some of the stuff athletic. How quickly does this dude play? Well, I mean, Jimmy G is still there mm-hmm. and he's, he only played 17 college games. So you don't got to throw him in the fire instantly. Cause he's going, he's going to need the, He's going to need to get some work. He's going to need to get some reps in practice and, you know, learn what he's doing in the NFL. I mean, he's only passed the ball 300 times. It's crazy. But the 49ers are stacked. When he does play, I think that he gives that he just gives them a more dynamic feel to their offense just from his running ability. And he has a cannon like he really can throw. I've been thinking about it now with the 49ers. Is, are they trying to recreate Colin Kaepernick with Trey Lance? No, I don't think I don't think so because it's, it's a whole different um, regime in there. Kyle Shanahan runs a totally different offense than what they were running, where they were running in um, San Francisco at the time. What they were doing in um, San Francisco is very similar to what um, the Ravens do now with um, Lamar Jackson. Greg Roman was the um, OC there, so I mean, that is that's one of the craziest things. Uh, Atlanta went Kyle Pitts generational tight end i i'm i'm not surprised by the pick but i didn't know how many more cracks they were given matt ryan i thought they would be potentially looking at a replacement how did you feel about that one i knew that's where atlanta was going i mean they have they have matt ryan locked in for two years i don't think arthur smith would have went there if he didn't have matt ryan locked in for two more years because he has because Arthur Smith, their new head coach, he had other options. He had other places he could have went. So I don't think he's choosing Atlanta unless he had Matt Ryan there. And I mean, you add Kyle Pitts to that offense because Kyle Pitts is a he's an absolute fucking well, I mean, match up nightmare. I mean, he's going you're going to drop Kyle Pitts on that offense, and he's going to be top five in um fantasy as a tight end. He's at the at the bare minimum. That is Kyle Pitts's floor as a player. I mean, that dude he can do anything. He can do anything. He's not a really good blocker, but you ain't draft him at the four pick two block. I mean, you can split them out. You can put you can put him in the slot and run routes. You can put him in line tight end and run routes. Like the man can do it all. He's a freak. No, I mean I agree. But Atlanta, I mean, they got Calvin, they got Ridley, they got Julio. Now they got Fitz. You got Matt Ryan if he even can stay upright. They'll score like forty points. They'll just as long as Matt Ryan don't fuck it up, they will. Score forty a Don't game. Score forty, but but lose six feet of forty. <laughs> the defense is historically bad. Uh, number five, Cincinnati. Um, where you're at right now. Shout out. We'll say shout out to Cincinnati. This pick was debated throughout, especially these past couple months. Do they go Panay Sewell, the uh, offensive tackle from Oregon, who people are already saying that he has like Hall of Fame talent, or do they go wide receiver? And the pick would have been Jamar Chase uh, because he was a teammate of Joe Burrow. And everyone was debating this one, which flew under the radar on the national scene, but not in our local scene in Ohio. They went Jamar Chase. So now they have Boyd Higgins Chase. 
how do you feel about that pick? I personally thought they should they should have got offensive linemen, but Jamar Chase is special. I mean, ESPN last night basically said he's a more compact DeAndre Hopkins. And I couldn't agree more. Like he could do all the contested catches. You can line him up anywhere on the field. Like he 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 a bully ball player who's going to get the ball. You put him in with that Bengals receiving core, and you got Joe and you got Joe Mixon back there. The ba- the Bengals ha- have been drafting linemen. They've just been hurt. So I think that's what I think that's what made them go for um, Jamar Chase. Obviously, the Joe Burrow connection helps too, but they they have linemen in, in the in the back that really haven't shined that they're trying to develop. So I think that's why they picked that's why they picked Jamar Chase so high. And I think more of their um more of their offense line needs are in the middle, and you can get certain guards later in the draft. No, oh, yeah, because I mean Jamar, he's he's a great wide receiver and now you want to talk about fantasy stuff if Joe Burrow stays upright they Higgins Chase boy that's that's a good fantasy like trio I think the only reason I would have went to Nay Sewell is just because the NFL is a copycat league and you saw what all the weapons that Kansas City had in the Super Bowl but if you don't have a line blocking for you those weapons don't mean anything because how are you going to get the ball to them if you got these Aaron Donors and Dominic and Sue's coming at you. That's the only reason I thought they would go so because you know the NFL like sees the trends and all that. But hey, I'm I'm not mad at Chase. I mean, he he is sweet. And then Panay Sewell, he gets dropped to Detroit. So they got uh Jared Goff some help. Number eight and number nine is where it got a little interesting because these were not on people's mock drafts. Uh, Carolina, obviously, they got Sam Darnold, and they have uh, Christian McCaffrey down there, and they went defense. They went J.C. Horn, the cornerback from South Carolina, and Denver at nine went Patrick Sturton, the second, the cornerback from Alabama. And I felt like those two picks messed up your team's thing because every Patrick was supposed to go to the Cowboys. We're we're slated to get. So, a cornerback and you know I thought at least one of those two J.C. Horn or Sertain would have been there because I thought with Justin Fields dropping Denver was automatically going to get yes. cornerback like that for- like that shocked me like J.C. Horn went to Carolina I, I was a little shocked but like I kind of get where they're coming from I mean you got in that division those, those receivers I mean you got Michael Thomas you got the Bucks with um, a with A B um Evans and Guy, and then you got the Falcons with their receiver. So I get the pick. They need a cornerback. They got a cornerback. Denver also needed a cornerback, but I think they should have got a quarterback. Like I, I really do. I thought Justin Fields would have been perfect at Denver as well as Chicago. But yeah, it was it was a little surprising to see them both go back to back. And I think that's why I think that's why Denver ended up getting the drafting that corner after J C Horn when they're like. Well, we need a corner too. Let's take the let's take the best guy who was leading up and in, leading up into the draft, who was the number one corner, and he fell to him. So, talk about Denver with like if Aaron Rodgers dropped there, it'd be crazy. No one knew about Aaron Rodgers stuff until yesterday. So, is Denver really that confident in Drew and Teddy? Like, I just didn't understand why they didn't go quarterback. I really didn't. Yeah, I mean. Shit, Drew Locke or Tay Bridgewater, you got the fourth best quarterback in your division, and you're not going to make the playoffs that way. So I, I thought I don't know what John L was Elway was thinking. I don't. I guess he just didn't like Justin Fields, or just thought that Vic Fangio, the coach, he probably had a lot to do with that. He's a defensive guy. He probably won the cornerback to solidify their defense more. I mean, you you can't go wrong with getting the corner, but I I thought they should have got a quarterback. So when the corners got. Uh off the board, you guys, the Cowboys, you actually traded back and gave the pick to the Eagle. Were you concerned? Because I almost thought I was like, eh, are they really that sold on Jalen? What if they get Justin and have an open? Were you concerned that they could have gotten Justin? I was I was mad when we traded the pick to the Eagles. I didn't I didn't care if they would have drafted anyone else, but if they would have drafted Justin Fields there, I would have been heated. I would have like 
You're idiots. How can you trade a division rival? That guy, that pick to get a quarterback, blah, 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 this. But the Eagles wanted to get ahead of the Giants, who were right after us, so they can get Devontae Smith, and the Giants couldn't get him. Mark, you got uh, Jalen Hurts, a weapon that he's on. Teammates were reconnecting. And then we already talked about Justin Fields in Chicago. We both love that. You got you guys got Michael Parsons though. Who will, that's that's a solid pick for not being able to get a corner though. Hey, Michael Michael Parsons is an animal. He opted out last he opted out last year in 2020, but in 2019 he he set the Big Ten on storm. I mean, he can he can go sideline on the sideline. He can cover. He can rush the passer a little bit. I like I like it for my team because you know Leighton Van Der Esch is is always injured. So you need to get someone in there for that. And Jalen Smith is, you know, eh. So we definitely need we definitely need some talent at linebacker. So I like the I love I love the pick. I love trading down and getting the pick. We picked up a third round pick doing that. So yeah. I thought I thought it was good. The Cow- as long as the Cowboys didn't draft any offensive players, it was all good. Because we don't need any offensive players. So that defense is trailer park trash. And then at number 15, which we're not used to seeing that team even up. New England Patriots. Um, everyone was saying they need to get a quarterback. And the way that the draft happened that Chicago went up to go get Justin, it worked out perfectly for New England. They didn't have to trade anything. Mac Jones fell to their lap. What do you think about Mac Jones going to the Patriots? How quickly do we see him? Like they did re-sign Cam this year, so I feel like he's still gonna be the starter. What do you what do you think about that? I think New England is about to start Mac Jones at quarterback. And really? See how? See how? I mean, they're not paying Cam Newton shit. That's, that's true. I mean, and then Cam Newton kind of cratered after he had COVID. And if you watch some of those Patriot games, he just could not throw. He could not throw at all. So I think I think you remove remove the dimension of Cam's running running for um, Mac Jones's accuracy, and the Patriots will be. In the wild card mix, and it's been so much the most money in our lifetime that we've seen the Patriots spend in free agency with what they did, and obviously with the Patriots too, because I think they had seven to nine defensive starters stayed out because of COVID, so they'll be back. So it, I mean, we'll see, man. Mac Jones is really good offensive line damian harris at running back the two tight ends i really like johnny smith oh he every time i watch the titans he was always catching touchdowns so watch out for new england unfortunately they might be back maybe I mean, potentially we'll see what mac jones i mean he's obviously coming from alabama so he's used to the Saban and belichick type coaches and it's just now anyone who steps into new england you know what you're going to be compared to looking up when you're doing the national anthem, looking up at the rafters, seeing six Super Bowls, so you know what quarterback you'll be compared to. So that was so then all the court. That was five five quarterbacks in the first round. And then if you want to keep going down here, you see that just go down to like Pittsburgh because Pittsburgh they went Najee Harris running back from Alabama. Alabama had a lot of people picked in the first round, and Pittsburgh's run. Offense was terrible, trash, awful. So how does Najee Harris? I mean, obviously we saw him in Alabama. He was doing great things. Does he help immediately? Like he has to be the day one starter. Yeah, he's going. He's going to start day one. You don't draft a running back in the first round. Don't play him. I thought personally they should try to get someone on the offensive line in the middle. And Pouncey retired. Yeah, Pouncey retired in the middle. They couldn't block. Like nope. their running, their running backs aren't too terrible on the roster. I mean, mostly playing running back is how good your line's blocking, and the Steelers' line can't run block. So, and these later round picks, they need to get some people who can run block in the middle. And Najee Harris would be fine. I mean, he can catch the ball. He can he can block. He can run. He's not a super burn, so he's not going to be you know gashing you for. 60 70 yard touchdowns but he's going to get you he's going to get you a nice 20 30 yard game and that's what he's going to do he's going to catch the ball at the backfield so he's a great back i like him i like him with the steelers steelers just need to do something with their line and they'll be fi- they'll be fine in the running game with him at running back 
And obviously, we talked about Green Bay. They went air to quarter uh, No, they should have went wide receiver. Honestly, to me, I think Green Bay, if they wanted to, because he actually just got picked by Arizona, which is making that wide receiver score scary. I think they should have went and got Rondell Moore. Versatile wide receiver for Purdue. Anyone listening to Ohio, you know what you saw Rondell Moore do to Ohio State as a freshman. He would have been a kick returner, punt returner. You could put him in that Percy Harvin slot, which is a weapon Aaron Rodgers has never really had. I think that would have been a great pick for the Packers, but he was picked up by the Arizona Cardinals in the second round, and that's going to be a scary offense over there. So so they got – what pick was he? He was probably – what pick was Rondell Moore? He was the 49th pick. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, I don't know what they're doing there. I mean, I, I, wrote, I wrote down the notes for Green Bay. They could have, they had two picks. They had two picks in 2019, two first round picks. They got two defensive guys. With that second pick, instead of getting Darnell Savage, you could have drafted T. Higgins. Mm-hmm. We saw what T. Higgins did. Like, it's just ridiculous. Like, also, I don't understand why. Actually, I, I said that wrong. Instead of drafting Jordan Love last year at 26, getting Aaron Rodgers heir apparent, you could draft the T. Higgins with that 26 pick. Also, and actually, they traded up to get Jordan Love. And T. Higgins was the first pick of the second round. So they could have set their asses there and just drafted T. Higgins. And we're probably not even in this situation. I'm thinking about like, why didn't. Why didn't Green Bay go after DeAndre Hopkins? It only took what a second round pick. Green. Speaking of Green Bay, just got Josh Myers, good center from Ohio State. What was your question again? I said, why didn't Green Bay go after DeAndre Hopkins when he wanted out? He didn't even take a first round pick to get him. That. Who would have had DeAndre Hopkins and Devontae Adams? It would have been. Then we're not in this situation. Like, I'm just thinking about, dude, why didn't, like, DeAndre Hopkins was, like, a second. It took a second, third round, and obviously we see that that's killed. I mean, shit, they could have they could gave up the first round pick and try to trade for Stephon Diggs. I don't think Minnesota oh, yeah. would have traded with him, but. Yep, Stephon Diggs was available, and he, and he basically almost lost the like they were giving up. And look what those wide receivers did when they got traded. They both had great gear. So, I don't know, man. Green Bay. And then Green Bay la- and then Green Bay last year with the second round pick last year, they get AJ Dillon, they get a fucking running back when you have two already. You have Aaron Jones and Jamal Williams. They could have drafted Clay Chapel Claypool. I don't know if they could have drafted Claypool, but he was a second round pick last year. But you know, there were options. Like th- I feel like Green Bay could have avoided this. I really do. I'm gonna tell Green Bay right now, this time next year, I think they'll be mid, so go and get Chris Olave and Garrett Wilson. Just gonna put it out right now. Get them. I feel like Green Bay's gonna have a pick in the twenties. Olave, Olave's top fifteen. I don't know about Garrett Wilson. You think that they'll be able to even get them? Oh, they got traded up probably, but oh, it's true. But I'm telling you right now, go get one of those two. Shit, they won't be in the top fifteen pick if Aaron leaves. They'll be in the top fifteen if Aaron leaves. He's he's playing twenty twenty one. Let's just sit down and doesn't play. Hey man, we used to. Hey, we thought Carson Wentz wasn't going to get traded, and he got traded this year too. <laughs> I was wrong about that one, but we'll see. I, I don't know, man. We're gonna like. There's some there's some wide receivers out there, and they could have made moves, and they just didn't. But do you also think it's because of the fact that they've been spoiled? Like they really went Brett to Aaron. Like two generational quarterbacks who can make up for a lot of faults. Do you think that's the reason? Like they haven't been they haven't been bad in a while. Yeah, I think that is a reason. Like you got those two guys back to back, and you, you start feeling yourself. You start taking them for granted. I mean, you have those. That I mean, that's the reason why they haven't been drafting first round re- receivers. We got Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers. We can we can draft these guys later and develop them because we have those two guys playing quarterback. Like. You know, you can get cocky. Like, the same thing with, like, Bill Belichick when, when he's drafting the offensive players. Like, you had Tom Brady for all those years, and, you know, Tom Brady was making the shit work because he's Tom Brady, not because 
you were drafting the right people. But New England did find, I, I will say they did find great offensive weapons just later. They, they can never hit a wide receiver. I don't know why in the first one. They just can't. But obviously they got like the, uh, the Amendolas, the Adelmans, obviously Mr. Do-It-All, James White, who's one of my favorite players. They didn't, they didn't draft those guys. They didn't draft Amendola and... Um, they didn't draft James? They drafted James White. They drafted James. They didn't draft Amendola and Wells Welker. They acquired those dudes. Oh, that's even worse. Did they get Edelman? And then, and then, and then Edelman was a fucking quarterback, and they just converted him. I mean, yeah, that's what they do. But, like, you know, these, these first-round picks go in the first round because they are superiorly talented. They got all the physical twos. They got the production in college, like... You know, there's there's levels to this shit. Like, yeah, you can coach the, the cheaper six round pick, but what if you took that coach and, and got the person with the actual talent? And then you see what happens with them. Like, it's just weirdo shit to me, man. Like, you have you have Aaron Rodgers. If this shit was an NBA, Green Bay would be fucking bending her back fucking backwards to fucking make that man happy. But you know, it's the NFL. They don't give a fuck. So they don't. They don't. And now <laughs> people wanting out. It's almost like the NBA stars. It's only been with the quarterbacks. They're like, yeah, I want out. I mean, the last one who really said it this summer saying he wanted out, well, was Deshaun, and that, that has not worked out well for him. So, and now Aaron's saying, yeah, I might want out. I don't know if this is a scare attack, but it's out there now, so we'll see who's falling. And any other of these picks that, like, jump out to you, like, if I asked you who won the draft, who do you think would you say won the draft? Round one, I would say, I'll say Atlanta and Chicago, honestly. The Chargers, they got a real pick. Rashawn Slater fell all the way down to them at pick at pick 13. They didn't have to trade up, and they got the tackle that they wanted. Like, So, yeah, so I'll say the Chargers, the Atlanta Falcons, and Chicago Bears. They all did good jobs. You're also our betting expert, I have to ask. Did you make any bets during the draft? Like who was going where? I made one bet that I actually I actually fucked up and read it wrong. I wanted to pick Jamar Chase going to the Bengals, but I accidentally picked over five and a half. So I would have been right, but I just clicked it wrong in the betting app. But that was the only one that I did though. I was like, ah, just ask me on some of these. But yeah, draft's going on still as we speak. Uh, we're definitely going to be keeping an eye on that. And obviously with the NFL recapping, Rodgers wants out. If you've been living under a rock, there's been a lot of QB changes. Carson Wentz is in Indianapolis. Matt Stafford is on the Rams. Goff is in Detroit. And Watson, I feel like the Watson thing has died down a lot recently these past couple of weeks. It was Every day, but right now it's been the media is thinking about the draft right now. I, I'm 100 percent confident. Once we done talking about the draft, we're going to get Watson updates every goddamn day because <laughs> that shit is insane. It's yeah. insane. Like when once we have a final thing, we'll be going back talking about that. But also on this draft episode, this is our 100th podcast. So wow, Justin, you. have Produced a hundred podcasts. How does that make you like feel? Like this is the hundredth one. One hundred times. I didn't think we'll get here, <laughs> but we got here, and because of the fans, we appreciate you guys trying to grow listenership every single day and keep tuning in. I yeah. think we got something for you. Yeah, I, I really when we started this because we're like, oh well, if we're gonna die of COVID, we might as well just start this and say we did it before we go. And to think that we're on our hundredth one, it doesn't feel like we've done a hundredth. But then when you actually like look at how many episodes we put oh, out, I I know we have done a hundred. <laughs> I do. It doesn't. It, feel, it feels like it for me. Go on. Oh, it doesn't feel like it for me, and I'm the one talking on all. I just see like when I look at posts, I'm like, dang, there was like four that came out this week. I was like, jeez. But then I think about how we have like literally six, seven solid people who contribute Lee every month and then some special guests that we have and it's like man 100 and we've been listening to all of these different countries and 
We were over a thousand plays, which never thought we'd get to that because when we started that, we didn't have any expectations. But it's crazy, man. Like, shout out to everyone who contributes and 100th episode. And of course, it's about the craziest NFL draft of maybe my life. So, (laughs) Dustin, man, anything else before we sign off? I'm good. I'm good right now. We probably check back in in the summer. See how OTAs and shit have been going. See if the Watson or Aaron Rodgers shit have moved any. Oh, I forgot to ask because the schedule is supposed to come out Wednesday. How much does this affect the schedule? Like, hey, if Aaron Rodgers isn't playing on Green Bay, we need to take them off national TV. Oh, if Aaron Rodgers is not on the Green Bay Packers, they will they will find the, they will find the way to take them off national TV because that that's one of their that's one of their meal tickets. You know. It's the Cowboys, it's the Packers, it's the Seahawks, Chiefs, Tampa now. Like, yeah, if they don't have Aaron Rodgers, that team is not relevant. How did NFL schedule day become such a big deal? Like, I don't remember it being this big a deal when I was like high school, but in my adulthood, like they pump up when it's schedule day. I mean, it is a big deal. Like where you're slated on the schedule, like who you play, the order of who you play, that shit matters. Like. It's definitely important. Like, you know, it's a fun day. You go through your win loss. You got the you got the actual that? order. You can go through it. See, so it's always a fun day. You're gonna do that for the fans. <sighs> what is the next? What is the next week? <laughs> the week comes out on Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. Um. You're gonna go through yeah. the Cowboys. Yeah, we might we might go through we might go through the national TV list or something. And oh, okay. we, we might have to do a little something. Kyle Trask, Tampa Bay. Oh, Kyle! La- la- <laughs> last pick of the second round. Kyle, <laughs> Kyle Trask. Kyle, I was talking about you today, man. That person, all right. I just felt like you are not probably never hear this. I gave you love, actually. But hey, with that being said, thank you everyone for listening to the L7C podcast. You guys take care. Thank you for listening to this episode of the L7C podcast. Be sure to like, rate, review, and subscribe to the channel. Follow us on all social media platforms, and we'll be talking to you guys soon. Take care.